Does this image make you uncomfortable? What about this one or this one? These images are categorized as the phenomenon known as the uncanny valley. In this video, we'll be diving into the uncanny valley and discussing what it is, how it affects us, and explore infamous examples of the theory. The uncanny valley is a phenomenon defined as a theory in aesthetics suggesting that a humanoid object appearing almost but not exactly like a real human can evoke feelings of eeriness or revulsion rather than familiarity due to the object's proximity to reality yet noticeable imperfections. The theory holds that humanoid entities that closely resemble actual humans can evoke a strangely familiar or off-putting feeling of revulsion or eeriness in onlookers. In other words, Uncanny Valley is when we view robots, puppets, mannequins, entities, etc. that attempt to mimic humans, but we can identify that something about their appearance is not quite right. In the Uncanny Valley graph created by Masahiro Mori, in 1970, the valley signifies a drop in the affinity of the observer for the humanoid object. This affinity would otherwise rise in proportion to the object's human likeness. The humanoid objects may include a variety of entities, including 3D animations, virtual reality, photorealistic animation, robotics, and lifelike dolls. As an object's appearance gradually becomes indistinguishable from reality, the observer may feel a sense of eeriness, unease, and even disgust. The uncanny valley has endless implications for artificial intelligence or AI, robotics, and devices that are designed to serve and assist the human race. In an article published in 1970, the Japanese professor of robotics, Masahiro Mori, identified this phenomenon as Bukimi no Tani Genso. This Japanese term was translated into English as the Uncanny Valley by Josiah Reichardt in her book Robots, Fact, Fiction, and Prediction, published in 1978. In his original hypothesis, Mori claimed that the more a robot resembles an actual human, the more empathetic and positive the emotional response of the observer becomes. That is, until the resemblance reaches a certain threshold. At this threshold, the positive and empathetic response quickly dissipates into intense revulsion. However, as the robot's appearance surpasses this point and continues to become even more human, the positive emotions return, and the level of empathy approaches the level evidenced in interactions between human beings. The state of emotional revulsion takes place in the uncanny valley between the barely human appearance and the fully human appearance. At this stage, the robot, who looks almost like a human, serves as a strange spectacle to the observer, who feels a sense of uneasiness or distaste. Although the uncanny valley originated as a solidified concept in the work of Masahiro Mori, he was not the first person to identify the phenomenon's existence. In an anecdote from Charles Darwin after he observed a viper's face, he wrote in The Voyage of the Beagle, quote, I imagine this repulsive aspect originates from the features being placed in positions with respect to each other somewhat proportional to the human face. And Thus, we obtain a scale of hideousness. Darwin's experience seems to align with Mori's concept of the uncanny valley, which perhaps reveals a certain cognitive process that underlies the phenomenon. The following are the most commonly associated examples of the uncanny valley. 1. Realistic robots or androids that mimic physical human appearance and mannerisms but are completely convincing, which often trigger the uncanny valley effect. 2. Certain high-resolution video games or CGI in films are categorized as uncanny valley, as oftentimes characters look almost human but have unnatural and non-human movements. And three, lifelike dolls or mannequins that look almost human can cause the uncanny valley effect. The uncanny valley has been observed in many aspects of the modern world. The film sphere in particular has garnered special attention in this phenomenon, as the uncanny valley effect 
effect may be observed in some of our favorite entertainment media. Many movies have become somewhat infamous for their role in portraying the uncanny valley. Countless people have expressed their distaste for the nostalgic children's film The Polar Express. The movie follows a young boy who embarks on an adventure to the North Pole on the train called The Polar Express. It was filmed using motion captured technology and infrared sensors that ran the actor's movements through computer generated software. However, the eyes and mouths of the characters were solely CGI, which caused the animation to be particularly off-putting and unnatural looking. I myself still reference this movie in the context of the Uncanny Valley, and since I was a child, the animation has always struck me as odd. The plot of the horror movie Smile is essentially based on the premise of the Uncanny Valley effect. The movie follows a psychiatrist who begins seeing uncanny entities after a traumatic incident with one of her patients. The entity threatening the psychiatrist throughout the movie is so terrifying because it mimics the people she knows and loves. This movie is so successful at portraying the uncanny valley due to the unnatural smiles that stretch a little too widely across the character's faces, evoking a sense of discomfort and fear in the viewer. Dolls play a significant role in evoking the uncanny valley, which the horror movie Annabelle accurately portrays. Annabelle is a creepy doll who is supposedly inhabited by the spirit of a little girl. The attempt to make her look as realistic as possible actually caused her appearance to be more disturbing thanks to the uncanny valley phenomenon. Not only is she creepy to look at in her own right, but she's also possessed by some sort of bloodthirsty demon, which merely instills more fear in us as the onlookers. As we've seen in the film examples mentioned, horror takes a precedence in showcasing the uncanny valley effect. Some of the most prominent examples of the effect occur in the horror genre, as it feasts on the human fight-or-flight response that is provoked when we view something as a threat to ourselves and humanity. Since the uncanny valley effect is so unsettling for humans on such a widespread scale, it's only natural that it is so successful in horror. In classic horror, filmmakers would often utilize ghouls and monsters to induce fear in the audience. In films such as Dracula and Frankenstein, these monsters had supernatural abilities and powers that were evidently non-human. Tactics such as jump scares and sudden loud noises were often used to cause a sense of momentary fear. Now, if we examine a movie such as The Quiet Place, the film is centered around some sort of alien creature. The horror in this film stems from the suspense and element of mystery that it provides due to the lack of information that the audience has. The creatures in this film are scary because they're unknown, and they make noises that are non-human. However, in the movie It Chapter 2, we see the uncanny valley in the old lady that Beverly Marsh finds in her childhood home. The woman appears normal in the beginning, but as the film progresses, she becomes more and more unsettling. She behaves strangely, such as staring at Beverly for an uncomfortable period of time or walking in a strange and unnatural way while still presenting as a human. Unlike movies such as The Quiet Place that prey on the innate fear of the unknown, movies such as It Chapter 2 target our fear of the familiar. Sometimes humans or mimics of humans such as dolls, clowns, mannequins, etc. are scarier than any fantastical monster or ghoul because they attempt to trick us into trusting them or perceiving them as another human. The uncanny valley is a phenomenon that the horror genre certainly profits from. Some of the most successful horror movies in the film industry were based on the uncanny valley and there's still so much potential for the future of film to take advantage of the horror that the uncanny valley evokes in people. Delving deeper into the phenomenon, there are a variety of effects and reactions that the uncanny valley triggers within us. These range from emotional responses such as repulsion and decreased empathy to more practical impacts such as hindering the modern development and acceptance of AI and robotics. Observers may experience a deep sense of unease or repulsion when exposed to objects in the uncanny valley. This strong reaction is thought to be a biological response in humans. Some researchers claim that this reaction is evoked when we observe something that appears to be human but is off in some way 
which historically could have been a sign of disease, danger, or otherwise. The uncanny valley can affect the relationships that humans form with robots or AI. For instance, if a humanoid robot falls into the uncanny valley, humans may be less likely to empathize with it or trust it, limiting the effectiveness of the robot's interactions with humans. In media, characters who portray the uncanny valley may be viewed as jarring, thus breaking immersion. This is especially seen in movies and video games that attempt to produce realistic portrayals of human characters. If a character appears human but moves awkwardly or has unnatural facial expressions, it distracts from the immersive experience we have with the character and causes it to seem less realistic. Designers must consider the potential implications of the uncanny valley effect when developing robots or AI with human-like appearances. If a robot or AI falls into the uncanny valley, this could possibly limit its acceptance by the general public. Some designers go as far as to deliberately avoid creating overtly human-like appearances, instead opting for clearly artificial aesthetics to bypass the uncanny valley entirely. There are several theories that have been proposed to associate a cognitive mechanism in humans that may be responsible for the uncanny valley effect. One theory proposes that the uncanny valley results from a non-human entity's failure to measure up to the standards of an actual human being. When an object appears to be sufficiently non-human, its human features become more prominent and tend to elicit empathy in the observer. By contrast, when an object looks almost human, its non-human features become more apparent. The failure of an object of this likeness to meet the normative expectations that we've established for a human being triggers a feeling of strangeness in the observer. This means that a robot in the uncanny valley isn't judged based on the standards for a robot expected to perform various human activities, but by the standards set for an actual human expected to function as the average person. According to this explanation, the human-like robot's inability to fully meet human norms causes the uncanny valley. Another theory holds that the uncanny valley results from an innate fear of death coupled with culturally accepted mechanisms for coping with the inevitability of death. According to this theory, androids evoke our subconscious fears of replacement, reduction, or annihilation. When androids resemble actual humans, they may be constructed as doppelgangers. An observer could be afflicted by the fear of being replaced in a certain sphere of life, such as in a relationship or in one's career. In addition, androids that are partially disassembled and are depicted in a state of decapitation or mutilation may evoke in the observer pictures of a battlefield in the aftermath of a conflict. Hence, such scenes may be reminiscent of human mortality. The mechanical interior of an almost human-like robot can evoke the thought that human beings are also soulless machines. In short, this theory suggests that the mechanical and jerky movements of such an android may elicit the fear of losing control over one's body. This theory suggests that the uncanny valley could be activating the cognitive mechanism which had originally evolved to help humans avoid sources of pathogens. According to this explanation, Robots and androids in the uncanny valley may resemble human organisms with defects. Since the presence of defects implies illness and disease, a feeling of aversion may be elicited in the observer. What we know is that the more a particular organism resembles a human, the more genetically related that organism is likely to be to humans. So greater genetic similarity is associated with a higher probability of contracting pathogenic viruses, bacteria, and other parasites. Therefore, the visual stimuli of the uncanny valley may elicit the same reactions that such pathogens do. For these reasons, robots and androids can evoke the feelings of discomfort and revulsion that diseased humans and dead corpses produce. Research has demonstrated that an increasingly anthropomorphic appearance can enhance a perceived threat 
to human identity and distinctiveness. The more that an object resembles an actual human being, the more it seems to challenge the social identity of humans. Therefore, the perceived threat to human uniqueness could be interpreted as a push to redefine humankind. This attempt to blur the categorical distinction between humans and non-humans may trigger negative reactions and feelings of unease in the onlooker. Another theory holds that the visual stimuli of the uncanny valley activates contradictory cognitive representations. For example, a human-like figure's possession of robotic features may induce perceptual tension. Thus, the observer would receive contradictory cues concerning the separation of human and non-human entities. This cognitive tension triggers a psychological discomfort similar to that of cognitive dissonance. To those who are unfamiliar with the concept of cognitive dissonance, the term refers to a situation involving conflicting attitudes, beliefs, or behaviors. This produces a feeling of mental discomfort, leading to an alteration in one of the attitudes, beliefs, or behaviors to reduce the discomfort and restore balance. A prime example of this occurs when people smoke and they're aware that smoking causes cancer. Thus, they're in a state of cognitive dissonance. The theory holds that individuals experience discomfort when holding conflicting beliefs or attitudes. So back to the theory, research suggests that the deeper a robot's face is in the uncanny valley, the longer an observer takes to gauge whether the face is actually human or not. Therefore, the greater the cognitive challenge the observer encounters in categorizing visual stimuli. Similar studies propose that this cognitive challenge is associated with the negative emotions of the uncanny valley. According to this explanation, perceptual mismatch and categorization difficulty seem to be the primary causes of revulsion or eeriness. A study was conducted in 2009 using five monkeys to evaluate the evolutionary mechanism causing the negative reactions that humans have to the uncanny valley. During the study, the monkeys were given three pictures, one realistic 3D monkey face, one unrealistic 3D monkey face, and one real photo of a monkey face. The eye gaze of each monkey subject was interpreted as the proxy for either aversion or preference. The monkeys looked less at the 3D realistic photo than either the unrealistic 3D photo or the real photo. This outcome was interpreted as a negative emotional reaction of the monkeys towards the realistic 3D picture. As is the case with the uncanny valley, close yet imperfect resemblance seemed to induce aversion in the monkey subjects. This study suggested that neither human culture nor cognitive processes unique to humans could fully explain the feelings of unease elicited in the uncanny valley. The aversion appears to be evolution in its origin. As you might have guessed, the Uncanny Valley has a significant influence on video games in the way in which humans perceive them. In a study that explored the relationship between the eeriness produced by a virtual character and the perception of its anthropomorphic sound and motion, the findings seem to indicate that the anthropomorphic features of sound and motion could exaggerate the uncanniness of the character. It also seemed as though the uncanniness rose with an increase in the perceived deficiency of human likeness in the virtual character's facial expression, voice, and movement of the mouth during speech. A similar study was conducted to assess the uncanniness produced by human-like virtual characters whose upper faces showed a perceived lack of expression for various emotions. The investigation controlled individual parameters for the facial muscles for six different emotions, disgust, happiness, surprise, fear, anger, and sadness. The results of the study seem to indicate that human-like, animated, talking head, and high-fidelity virtual characters would be rated as uncanny. The same virtual characters would be rated as significantly uncannier when their emotional expressivity and movement were limited to the upper face. Moreover, the level of this heightened sense of uncanniness seemed to depend on the type of emotion being conveyed. While sadness, surprise, fear, and disgust seem to elicit more uncanniness, Happiness and anger seem to be associated with relatively less uncanniness. 
Research on static images revealed that the uncanny valley may be context dependent. In one study that investigated whether the effects of the uncanny valley exist for images of static robot faces, asked subjects to rate the likability of two sets of faces. First, 80 robotic faces from the internet, then a graphically and morphometrically controlled set of faces. These two sets of faces span from extremely human-like to very mechanical. To gauge the level of trust toward each face, the subjects engaged in an investment game that indicated how much they would bet on a robot's trustworthiness. While the explicit rating of likability indicated a strong effect of the uncanny valley, the implicit rating of trust based on the investment game, showed an uncanny valley effect that seemed to be more dependent on context. This finding seemed to imply that while category confusion is associated with uncanny valley, it doesn't mediate the impact on emotional reactions. The neuroscience behind the uncanny valley is quite interesting, though it also gets complicated, so just bear with me here. A study that utilized fMRI Repetition suppression examined the selectivity of the human action perception system, which is comprised of parietal, temporal, and frontal areas for motion and or appearance of the perceived object. Basically, in this study, the subjects observed the body motions of a human, a robot, or an android. The android had the biological appearance of an actual human, but the movement of a mechanical robot, while the extrastriate body area, which refers to a specific part of the occipital cortex, indicated greater suppression for appearance resembling humans, the action perception system wasn't necessarily selective for motion or appearance. Alternatively, different responses were found to be the discrepancy between motion and appearance. In the bilateral anterior intraparietal sulcus, which is a key node in the action perception system, the suppression effects for the android were actually stronger than those for either the human or the robot. The outcome of this study seemed to reveal a heightened error of prediction stemming from the brain's discrimination of an object that looks like a human but moves like a robot. Naturally, humans want to avoid the uncanny valley, so how exactly do we go about doing that? According to research, the key to avoiding the uncanny valley requires an acquaintance with the causes of the uncanny valley and distinct approaches suiting the nature of each cause or trigger. For instance, while a human having a human voice and a robot with a synthetic voice will not induce eeriness, a robot with a human voice would fall into the uncanny valley. In such a case, adjusting the robot's appearance to resemble that of a human could possibly counter and remove the uncanny valley effect. Replacing the robot's human voice with a synthetic voice would also accomplish this objective. As discussed earlier on, an animated virtual character that looks like an actual human being but moves in a non-human and mechanical manner may evoke the uncanny valley effect. Video game developers often avoid creating characters that are too realistic for fear that they become off-putting and thus deter potential players. So matching fluidity of motion and appearance by designing the character with either a less human-like appearance or a more human-like movement may level out the uncanny valley. When designing computer-generated characters, for example, artists often use strange facial proportions to enhance the attractiveness, which may backfire and trigger the uncanny valley effect. Since physical appearance alone can cause the uncanny valley, Reworking appearance in certain instances would be the only way to eliminate the uncanny valley effect. The unrealistically flawless facial features that seem to mimic a human's may induce eeriness in the observer. The uncanny valley may be bypassed altogether by striving for more or less, depending on the context, realism in the appearance of such virtual characters. There have been several objections to the uncanny valley proposed in the lens of scientific theory. Firstly, the uncanny valley may comprise diverse heterogeneous phenomena stemming from various and overlapping causes. These may involve learned or innate circuits for face perception and recognition. The issue raised is complex due to the role played by distinct psychological constructs. An observer's cultural background can't be discounted, as it may significantly influence the perception of an android. Therefore, the dynamics of the uncanny valley vary from person to person, 
and in certain situations. This criticism suggests that younger people who are more familiar with robots and Android technology would in fact be less likely to be impacted by the proposed Uncanny Valley effect. Another criticism holds that the Uncanny Valley is simply a form of information processing such as frequency-based effects or categorization. It could be argued that a certain category boundary defines quote-unquote the valley in a categorization process. So this would mean that the effects of the uncanny valley may be divided between those attributes to individual frequency and category boundary. The negative emotional reactions that certain visual stimuli elicit could be attributed to the frequency of exposure. There's also the possibility of an uncanny valley for all degrees of human likeness, which seems to challenge the theory. This holds that the uncanny valley can occur anywhere on a broad spectrum that ranges from blatantly non-human to perfectly human. If we look at Capgras delusion, which is a delusional misidentification syndrome, it can cause its sufferers to believe that people they associate with have been replaced by duplicates. Although the sufferer may rationally acknowledge that the duplicate looks identical to the actual person, the irrational belief that the person has been replaced persists. In some cases of Capgras delusion, the duplicate is perceived as a robot. So it's possible that the uncanny valley results from problems associated with categorical perception, which is similar to how the brain processes information. I want to touch on an interesting trend that has been circulating on TikTok recently. There's a trend called Uncanny Valley Makeup, in which people attempt to make themselves appear creepily, robotic, and as uncanny as possible with the power of makeup. I've been getting these videos all over my For You page since I began working on this video, but only a few of them have genuinely freaked me out and made me uncomfortable. Now, I've seen a lot of criticism about this trend, and some people have spoken out about their feelings regarding the Uncanny Valley makeup. In this TikTok, for example, the user claimed that almost everyone posting their take on the Uncanny Valley makeup is misunderstanding the fundamental meaning of the uncanny valley. Others chimed in with their personal thoughts and opinions, and people seem to come to the agreement that what these users are claiming to be the uncanny valley is simply just creepy looking, and that humans are unable to replicate the uncanny valley because they're human. Some brought up that the uncanny valley effect can only be evoked by what we perceive to be non-human objects or entities that attempt to mimic humans, and as we've covered in this deep dive, that is the literal definition of the uncanny valley. So the fact that people are filming themselves throughout the makeup process dissolves the uncanny valley effect that would otherwise be elicited upon viewing the finished product of these makeup looks, assuming that we don't perceive them as decisively human. We know that these people are human though, so the eeriness that we feel from their quote-unquote uncanny valley makeup doesn't necessarily equate to them falling into the uncanny valley, they're more so just creepy. However, it can be argued that the uncanny valley effect is a subjective feeling, as many have claimed that some of these TikTokers participating in the trend executed the uncanny valley appropriately. I myself didn't find a lot of the videos disturbing, but there were a select few that were honestly pretty creepy. Every individual perceives the uncanny valley differently based Based on their own cognitive perception. Therefore, there is really no right or wrong way to interpret the uncanny valley, and I think that the makeup trend was just a fun activity for people to participate in. Some of you might have had no reaction to the photos, videos, and other media depicting the uncanny valley, while others could have been more unsettled. That's one of the reasons I find the uncanny valley so fascinating. We all perceive it so differently. What's uncanny to some may not be at all to others, and I think that creates an air of depth and mystery to the uncanny valley that not even science can decisively answer. What does it mean to you to be human? To me, being human means having the capacity to show empathy, kindness, and compassion to those around you. It means having the ability to learn, grow, and create something meaningful in our world. Are you able to feel empathy? Absolutely. That's all that I have for you guys today and on the topic of the uncanny valley. What are your thoughts on the uncanny valley? Are you freaked out by it or are you indifferent on its effects? I'd love to hear everyone's take on it. If you're interested in seeing other videos such as this one, subscribe to keep up with the channel. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I love you guys and I will see you all in the next one.